Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In last week's tutorial, we created some sophisticated, traditional, formal, and classy hand addressed envelopes. In this week's tutorial, we're going to go in the exact opposite direction. These ones are going to be whimsical and playful and fun for some of your more hip friends and family and events. So at what you see in front of you is exactly what we're going to be creating in this video and I will leave links to every single material mentioned in the video description so just check right below the video for that link. Okay so we're going to get started and we're just going to move along from the more simpler ones. So we're going to start with this white one and then move to the yellow and then we'll finish up with some white on the screen envelope. So I'm going to set these aside for right now. This is a Nina paper envelope and Nina paper has some really wonderful environmental papers that I really love because I don't know if you can see or not but there's some really nice speckling happening on the paper and that kind of feels a little like confetti if you're making a playful envelope and it's it can work class in a classy sense too which this is the exact same envelope that we use for the sophisticated white envelope and I just wanted to show how you can use if you only have white envelopes you can do you can create an outcome that is both fun and playful and also classy and traditional so for this example we're going to start with a fun kind of script and I'll kind of tell you about some of the details that are in this that make it so fun looking and then we'll move on throughout uh, the more kind of complex uh, things that are going on right here. So just like in the last video, we want to make sure that we're leaving enough room for our postage stamp, which this one I think is cutting it pretty close. So I'm going to move things down just slightly. And when you're thinking about your envelope, you have to think about hierarchy. And I always like having the person's name be at the forefront. So my focus is always drawing the most attention to the person's name and then having the address kind of support that. So when I'm thinking about how I'm going to create the name, I always want something that's going to be different than the rest of my address so I can call attention immediately to the name. So here I've chosen to do this really bold script and this is kind of the non-traditional calligraphy that uh, I went over in a previous video so definitely check that out. I'll leave a link to that if you want to do a similar style. Okay, so I'm just going to hop right in and start lettering. I always do um, I usually grab a post-it note and I just pump it a couple of times and make sure I've got an even flow before I get started. And I usually actually letter this out in some scrap paper, but since I already have this done uh, in preparation for the video, that's already taken care of. So I can hop right in and I just want to kind of have an idea of where to center things since the more playful ones are much larger by nature. They take up more space, so it's actually a lot easier to center these on your envelopes. So um, this is a totally made up address for this example, um, even though I am from upstate New York. Okay. Okay, so a few things I want to talk about here is when you're creating a more playful or whimsy uh, lettering, keep your letters closer together. The further out they are, the more sophisticated they tend to be portrayed. And when you have loops like my, my K and my F and my L, make them really big so they're accentuated compared to the other letters because that'll give it a more playful feel. And also whenever you have the opportunity to throw in a few little curls here and there, definitely take advantage of that because the more kind of curls you have, that adds to the playfulness as well. So I'm just going to go through here and increase the weight of everything by just um, thickening up the downstrokes of each letter and then we'll move on to the rest of the address. Okay, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is just make sure whenever you're putting the extra weight on there that you're putting the same amount of weight on each letter. And I also chose to do lowercase for both the first and the last name because I feel like that's instantly seen as being more playful and fun and definitely not as traditional, um, just keeping it lowercase instead of uppercase. So that was why I made that decision. And because I've got a little extra room here, I'm going to copy my example right here and put a little two on here at an angle, which is also another way to add some playfulness to your lettering. Okay, 
And now we're gonna hop right into the address portion. And as you can see, the weight is much different than up here, we're gonna go much thinner. And then down here, we're gonna thicken it up a little bit to kind of bring the whole piece together. So right here, you can see I've broken things up quite a bit. So the address is 36 Wilmington Way. And as you can see, I've kind of swooshed way right below Wilmington to tie them together and also relate them back to here and keep everything kind of different. Whereas in graphic design by nature, you wanna kind of limit the amount of typefaces that you're using to two and at most three. On an envelope, when you're talking about being playful and whimsical, have at it. Go as many styles as you want because it's only gonna increase the fun that's, that's happening. So right here, I'm kind of keeping the same look here. I've got a script here and then we're changing it once again down here. So I'm gonna go and letter out 36 Wilmington Way, New Hartford, and then I'll pop back here uh, to talk about this last piece. Okay, so the other kind of cool thing about um, creating a more fun style is that you can adjust as you go along. So where I had the Y coming down, the descender, when I had my F coming right under it, I just tucked it right under there and made it work. And that's what is kind of the fun part about doing the style is adjusting as you go and it's definitely hand on and that's what gives it a lot of the charm that it does have. Okay, so for the state right here, I'm gonna stack it so that's a little different just to kind of change everything up and make just have a lot of fun with the way you arrange everything. So I'm gonna stack it and point to the zip code right here. And this, I'm gonna do kind of this faux drop shadow. So as if my light were coming from the top left, I'm just coming down and imagining where the shadows would be hitting and I'm leaving some space between the actual number and where this line of a shadow is falling. So I'm gonna letter this right now and then I'll be right back. Okay, so that is our first whimsical layout. And now we're gonna move on to the yellow card. So as you can see, in comparison to the first card, we're getting really fun with the way we're arranging our letters. We're kind of tucking them together. And then we've got a very huge difference, a, a giant contrast between the way we write the recipient's name where we've got si kind of a serif lettering style and then we move to a more condensed lettering style that's super tall letters. They're all kind of tucked together really playfully. Then we go into a script and then we go into a sans serif with extra weight and then we finish it off with a sans serif normal weight, mono weight. And then we just threw in a couple of extra doodles just to make it that much more fun. So whereas this one was kind of more straightforward and we just changed things up slightly, this one we're getting a little more out of control. So we're gonna hop right in to this one and I'm gonna start by first lettering off our recipient's name in this kind of serif style. Um, if you're not comfortable with a serif style, the easy thing to do is to draw it all sans serif, see how things fit together, then do your downstrokes, and then finish it off with your serif. And uh, that's an easy way to kind of fake a serif. If you can't wrap your head around it as you're writing it, um, definitely feel free to do that and no one will ever know. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in and I'm just going to letter off the recipient's name first. Okay, so just like the last envelope, I wanna make sure I draw a lot of attention to the name of the recipient before anything else. So that's why I've made it this really bold serif. And now I'm just gonna go in and add a lot of contrast. So since this one's a mono weight and it's condensed and it's really tall because it looks so different, but it's a lighter weight, I'm drawing attention immediately. Your eye knows to look here first before you look here, even though this is complementing it really well. So I'm just gonna letter out this next part and then we'll come back to finish everything off with the script down. Okay, one thing I did wanna mention is when I'm talking about the street that this person lives on, 
even though it's really fun, um, the baseline remains the same. So I tried my best to keep a straight line for the baseline, and then I just extended the letters up and tucked them into the actual name. So I'm kind of pointing at the name, but at the same time giving myself an even baseline to finish everything off. So I've got a nice little variety going on there. So now I'm just gonna write out the city in script, darken up New York just like we did in the previous card, and then write out the zip code and we'll be done with this version. Okay, so that finishes off this one, and just to add one little final detail, we'll put some little bursts around the name just to draw even more attention. Okay, so definitely gives you the feel of fun, and I'm sure this person would be really excited to get this in the mail. Okay, so we're gonna go on to our very last example, and this one goes totally whimsical because we've got a bunch of just crazy looking letters, lots of curls, some dots, and once again, accentuating different letter forms to really add the playfulness in all the way around. So I'm gonna grab my white paint marker this time, give it a good shake, and I always have my little post-it or scrap sheet of paper, and I just wanna make sure, I like having a colored sheet of paper so I can see my white. I'll give it a few pumps and draw it out and make sure I've got an even flow going with the paint. That's working. All right, that's working good. Okay, so I'm going to draw out the name first and then we'll make everything kind of tuck into it afterwards. And a lot of the same exact things that we just went over for the rest of it, so it'll be cake from there on out. Okay, so I'm going to start with the name. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the rest of the address now, and as you'll notice, kind of similar to what we did in the first card, we've got Wilmington on one line and Way on the other one, but this time we got a long arrow pointing to it and even some extra dots to feel more like a party. And we've thickened up the 36 to kind of mimic the name right here, draw the two together, gone super condensed sans serif for the city, and then thickened everything up to end the card and draw everything together so it feels in harmony. Okay, so that concludes the last card that we had. So if we bring everything that we did together, you can see we've got three different layouts, kind of moving letters around, playing around with different styles. And as you can see, they're all giving off a really playful, fun, and whimsical feel. So whenever you're planning your next event for some of your super fun friends and family, this is a type of lettering style that you can use on all of your invites. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single week. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.